So the topic for today's video is setting up concrete forms. Now there were three different types of forms. The first ones were the high lows. They only had a clip here and a secondary clip here. And that's how you clip them together. There was no bar. They were individual. So one, one clip did the snap tie, one clip did the bolt. They had just pieces of steel here, here, and then at the bottom. So you'd have only three. The forms were thicker, they were inch and a half. These are inch and an eighth. These style of forms, you call them resi forms, some people call them residential forms, plywood forms. They're inch and an eighth thick. They have the bar across, and as you can see, they're one stop shop. So this latch hooks the snap tie and the bolt in one shot. It's a lot faster and easier method than the high lows. The other set would be the commercial forms made out of steel with the plywood that's replaceable. Those are very good when you're stacking high or doing very long runs. They're a lot longer to put together. They take more work, more hardware. This is a lot simpler because it's a contained system. So basically when you, you're going to start forming, you start at a corner. So this is a what they call a 4x4 four four corner. This is the first thing you're going to set up. You're not going to start in the middle of the wall because number one, it's going to be a lot harder to level and get level and stay that way. And the other thing is you're going to have odd sizes at both ends of your wall. Wherever you're going to make that next corner to turn, it's going to be a lot longer and tougher to make it all connect and work out together. So the easiest spot, the right way to do it is to start here at a corner. So when you have the lines snapped on the footing, you're going to just measure off the face of the wall. So the face of the wall is here. You're going to measure back the width of the wall. So if you do a 12 inch wall, you measure 12 inches back to the line. You set it here. You go on that side, 12 inches off the line. You put the corner right in place. On most footings, the corner will just stand up because it's level. Sometimes it's not going to. You have to be careful, especially on a windy day. No, no, no. Hold the tail. Cameraman, what are you doing? You could show, all right. Well, you can't, you know, all you right. can't make everybody dizzy, you know. So, once you have the corner set, you're gonna set this form and this form. That's gonna keep it 100% from moving. All right. You're then going to set up a second form here and here, just like this. And you're gonna set them up 100%. You're gonna put in the snap ties, you're gonna lock the locks. You don't necessarily have to put the filler panel in on the back side just yet. You can if you have it available. If you don't, it's okay. So what you're going to want to do is, at this point, this is critical. Even if this spot is open, you can still do this level. Now what you want to do is, you want to check for plumb this way. Even more important, you want to check for plumb this way. Now you may say, why? The reason why you care about if this is plumb is because as you continue, if it's not level, by the time you get to the far end corner, wherever you're going and stopping, the form could be sitting like this, and when you go to close it with a corner that's sitting level, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have an open space that you're not going to be able to fix. And once you get so far down the line, it's going to be impossible to fix it later. So this is the critical time. You have the two up here, the two up here, and you got to check plumb both ways. The other reason you want to make sure this is plumb is because the corner is very important to have dead on. Because once you get to the center, the forms are going to be a little off. And at the end, when we get to that, I'm going to explain to you about the string you're going to run along the top. So now, once you check that your forms are level, and you got the corner set up and this is all ready to go, you can continue forming. Now, in all likelihood, to keep this level, you're going to have to put on a brace. 
So what you're going to do is, you're going to take a 2x4 brace, one that's preferably not chewed up to hell like this one, and you're going to stick it into the ground, and you're going to push the forms either way they need to go. I would put it on this form so you get a little more leverage from the steel corner. Now, once you throw up your level, you're going to check it to make sure this is level, nail up the brace. Now, you never take a brace, before we even go any further, you never brace it like this. A lot of guys do it this way, that's not the right way to do it. If the brace is too short, you can't use it. Okay, the way a 2x4 has its strength for bracing is like this. This would be the, op the optimum use of the brace. The reason being is, it gives you the top, so you can nail up a 2x4 for the trainers, and it also gives you the most amount of strength. When you have it like this, there's too much upward pressure. The form can move and knock this out of alignment. You want the strength just like this. Like I said, preferably, it would be like this, right in this spot. It doesn't affect the scaffold, it doesn't affect the straightener. This would be the best case scenario. In reality, it, does, it doesn't always work out that way, but that's okay. The world is not a perfect place. Okay, so now, once you have that set, you do one brace here, and you're gonna go on the other side, same form, you're gonna do the same thing, and push it into place. You're gonna make sure both sides are perfectly level and plumb. Then, you can continue going on down the line. Okay, so you're gonna pick up the form, however you grab it, wherever it is. Set it. Okay? So, it doesn't really matter where you start. I don't like to start in the middle. You can start at the top. That's the easiest place to be. Flip it up. Done. So now, you see, you have a bit of a problem here at the bottom. You flip the clip. Press against the form. The other form that's set with the clip like this. See how the form comes right out? Just like so. Done. And you can do this one, and this one is easy. Once you do the top and the bottom, the middle ones just fall right into line. Then, you come over to your forms, you're going to see there's concrete wedged in there. you got to clean it out. Okay? Same thing for the other side. Once that's clean, you can take your snap ties, put them in, this will also help you maintain the width of the forms as you continue. Then you would just keep continuing on with the forms. So now, once you get to the end, which I don't have a tape measure on me, so once you get, yes. How come you don't put a snap tie in every clip? This is just for demonstration. If oh, it's but an actual it, job site, yes. You would have a snap tie you in every put clip. A snap tie in every one. Now, if the height is to here, the level you're going to, you don't need the top. You would just flip the clip like this. That's what we do. You would just flip this clip just to hold it in place. But you don't need a snap tie if the concrete's not going to go above it. Now, if you were to pour up to here, you would need this snap tie in. Okay? So now, as you continue, you're going to get to the front or the back, wherever you started, and you're going to get to the line. Let's say the line is here. So now, how are you going to figure out the filler that you need to get you from here to here? So what you're going to do is, I don't have a tape measure on me, let's say the wall is 12 inches thick. You're going to measure back 12 inches, if you want, you can make a little mark. Then you would measure back four inches for the corner. So what I'll do is I'll just, excuse me. So once you measure back to 12 inches, let's say that puts you here. You have the four inch corner. See, this is four inches. Once you have it set here, you don't have to set the corner, I'm just using this to show you. Four inches, that would be 16 inches off your line, you then go A to B. 
whatever size this is, it could be 8, 6, 20, whatever you got, that's how you fill it in. That's how you would figure that out. What size to put in. Now, like I had said, while we're on the topic of sizes, the size for the back over there, it would be the same thing to close that corner up. You would use the width of the wall plus the four inches. So again, 12 inch wall here, 12 plus four is 16. You would use two 16s to close that off because the corners that close the outside do not take up any space. Okay, they just sit right like this. The form sits here, the form sits here. It takes up no space. So you would not account for this in your math when you're figuring it out. So this doesn't equal anything. It's just a piece of steel to hold this and this together. Okay, so now you're closed up. Okay, you got all the forms up. Now you're ready to take the next step. Next step is you got to set up a scaffold because how on earth are you going to work all the way up here from down here? Maybe if you're seven feet tall, you would have an advantage. You're going to take a scaffold bracket like this one. Typical scaffold bracket. You can get them from any form place. Uh, depending how tall you are, you could put it here. You, we prefer to put it here. It gives you a little more leverage when you're shoveling. Just right like that. That's it. Done. So that's installed. Now the next thing you would do is you would see how long your board is. Let's just say this is a 2x12 or your plank for scaffold. You could put it, you don't have to put it up, you could use a rough guess. What you would do is you would put the next bracket, put the thick, put the wood up, and if you needed support in the middle, if it was 16 foot, if you had a 16 or a 20 foot board, you would obviously need support in the middle. If it's an 8 foot board, you could just go from end to end, and that would be fine. So you see how this one, you don't have a clip to clip, you're going to have to run it all the way just like so. Okay, and what you would do is, you could do one of two things. You could use a, another scaffold bracket here and run the plank underneath, and that would give you the strength to hold this. If you don't have that option, just nail something right there, and that would hold it up as well. Okay, so now your scaffold is up. Next step that you want to do is, well, I still need this, okay? You now want to nail on a straightener. These forms individually are not going to stay straight with the snap ties on their own. Every snap tie is slightly different. It's not going to be exact 100% and neither are your forms. So on the outside of the wall, the wall that the, the, the side of the wall everyone's going to see, it wouldn't be on this side in all likelihood, but we'll just stand here for the ease of it. You would nail it up like this, okay? You could use eight penny nails, or if you use 10 penny nails, drive them in on an angle. If you use eight penny nails, you could drive them in straight. You don't want to break the inside of the form with the nail. The tens, the 10 penny, if you do want to drive it in straight, if you don't feel comfortable nailing it on an angle, nail it in a little bit and then bend the head over. But make sure you drive the nail all the way in, because when you're working up there, you don't want to get snagged. Okay, so now you're going to put the 2 by 4 up. So what you do is with a 2 by 4 you would nail it up here. The first one like this. Reason being is, when you do the next 2 by 4 you want to overlap a little bit. Just like this. You could overlap like this, like this. Not, you know, that's a little bit too, too small. I would say half the form, just like this. You overlap it. This way they all lock in nice together. Okay? So now your 2 by 4s are up. Is the wall straight? No. There's another step. What you're going to have to do is, remember what we talked about earlier with the corners, okay? You're going to have an outside corner sitting over there. Whatever side your straightener is on is whatever side you put the string on. You're going to tie a string. Now, if, if you don't have a corner that's high like this, let's say your corner is the same height as the form, you're going to want to put in a 2x4 or a stake, whatever you got. You're going to nail it up to the inside, and nail it up to the, you can nail it inside, outside, whatever you prefer. Uh, we do either or. Let's just say you nail it to the outside. You nail it here, you're going to tie that string up on this side, 
and run it all the way down. And your goal is, after all that, is to make sure that you have A to B straight. Okay, so these are not necessarily braces. The braces that you put in the beginning when we, when we spoke every 10 feet, I think I forgot to mention that. You need to space the braces out every 10 feet. So you just count one, two, three. You would do two more forms and put another brace. So these are what's, this is what's holding the forms up. What's now, what you're now doing is you're pushing the forms to make sure that they're straight. You're not gonna straighten both sides of the wall. That would be nearly impossible. And it would take way too much time. Like I said, the face the people see is the face you're gonna make perfectly straight. Okay, so you're gonna run that line up just a hair above the form. Could be right about here. Right about this height so you could see it when you were working. You're gonna take your planks, two by fours, whatever you want. Like I said, just like this. And you're gonna push the form either way. Sometimes the forms will be bowed this way, sometimes they'll be bowed that way, it doesn't matter. You just wanna make sure it's perfectly straight. And the reason for the two by four going the full length is so you don't need to brace every single form individually. One brace to a 16 foot or a 12 foot two by four is all you're basically going to need. So again, you're just speeding up the process. So now, the concrete you're going to have to check the straight again so the string line stays up at all times during the pour so then again after the concrete is poured in there you don't want to wait too long once it gets hard you're not going to be able to to do it after you got to do it relatively right after you finish it check that it's straight adjust the two by fours as necessary once in a while, your braces that you did down below here may have to come off to make sure that this is going to be perfectly straight. It happens sometimes, not all the time. Okay, and of course, you should always oil the forms. Some people do, some people don't. It's up to you. Okay, so I don't have a snap tie breaker tool with me today, but if you have the breaker tool, it looks similar to like this, like a scissor. It's fixed. You would go like this the next day or whenever you're stripping the forms and you just twist it like this and this little head will pop off and then all you got to do is get a hammer and you pop the clip off you pull the form down that's the process that's the entire system this is the system that we use we like it like i said there are other options out there i don't think they make the high lows anymore but you can get the commercial steel forms or you can get these Okay, I hope this video has helped you out. Uh, questions, comments, please leave them down below. Give a thumbs up if you like it. Give a thumbs down if you didn't. And I guess till next time, guys, be safe, take care, and 